Aloha and welcome to the screencast on the Meteor Example Autoform application. I built this because I wanted to figure out how to display checkboxes and radio buttons and multiple selection lists, kind of, you know, form elements other than the standard text fields and text areas that are generally shown in the example applications. Um, and I wanted to try to use auto, the Autoform package in Meteor to do so because it looks like it can make life a lot easier. And uh, in general, it, it actually does. So I wanted to create the simplest possible application that, that focuses on how you display more advanced form elements. So there's a lot of stuff that's kind of missing from this for a real application, but I think the code itself will help you understand you know, how, to, how to get there. So we're using Autoform, we're using Twitter Bootstrap, um, and we're not using the insecure or auto-publish packages in Meteor, so we're going to use publish, subscribe, and, and Meteor methods. Okay, um, And the reason why I did this is because I used to teach the Play framework, and I built a very similar application called Play Example Form for, for figuring this out for Play, and then now I've switched over to teaching Meteor, and I wanted to see uh, how I did it, and it's kind of actually kind of cool if you know you want you can go check out play example form and you can see um, and, and if you want to delve into the code it's kind of interesting to see the similarities and differences between play and, and meteor so what does this actually look like in practice I've got an example running here um, and I've got a console window up below because we're gonna actually need that so if I type in you know my name and a bio statement statement and I select a a hobby and a level and a GPA and maybe a couple majors and I click submit um, the form resets but the the data has been um, been sent off to the server and then I've got some console log statements in the code that actually tell me what the doc ID that was created so if I take that doc ID I can go to a second page not the home page but a second page um, and supply this doc ID and then submit that and now I get my data back in a form very similar but now I have an update button so I can actually you know change stuff and click update and now um, it turns out that that uh, underlying document has been updated in the database so that's all this thing does um, uh, and that's all you you know all I really wanted to accomplish with this is show a basic insert and a basic update um, and how how you do that with uh, with Autoform. So how do, how do we do that with Autoform? Um, we're using Iron Router because there's two pages and um, the routing is you know pretty straightforward. It's all in this file. We're gonna have a layout template which contains you know all that Twitter bootstrappy type stuff. Um, when the application, when a client retrieves the application for the first time, it's gonna subscribe to the student data collection and if it takes a little bit of time there'll be this spinner that's that's displayed and if you just go to the home page the template that's going to be displayed is called add student data uh, if you in, instead go to the students slash and then a document ID um, URL you're going to go to it you're going to display a different template template called update student data and the data context for that will be the doc ID uh, or the document sorry of of that actual um, collection specified by that there's no error checking if you Put in some bogus ID. That's that's pretty you know that's that's easy to do. Um, but I just didn't want to complicate the code for for this particular example. Um, so what is the student? Uh, so th so those are our two pages. We got the two templates. Um, before we see those templates, though, let's take a look at the um, definition of student data because this is actually where a lot of the heavy lifting for uh, the form occurs at least when you're using the auto form package. So um, I've got this little this little variable that helps me not make typos when I'm typing out student data. Um, and then we've got the the Mongo collection. This is all very straightforward. Here's the two meteor methods for adding student data and updating student data. And again, I've got these console logs, and uh, I do validation right here, and then I just call the the insert function. So this is pretty straightforward. You can look at all sorts of auto form examples to, to see that, but they're you know kind of two liners if you take out the the console log statement. Um, and I have a callback right here just so that I can actually print out the document ID to the to the console so I can use that. And then I publish um, 
you know, I, I wanted to kind of put together the, all the collection stuff in one file. So I, I, instead of making a separate publications file on the server side, I just do that. Okay, but here's the interesting part, which is I take my student data uh, Mongo collection and I call this attach schema function, which, uh, and then I define this thing called the simple schema. And this is pretty cool. It allows me to specify for all the fields in my document um, a label which will be used when I display it, what the type of the object should be. Sometimes it's a, a, an atomic object or a primitive object. Sometimes it's an array. Um, and whether or not it's required or optional, sometimes it's required, sometimes it's optional. Um, and, you know, some, some kind of type constraints, like for a string, the maximum number of characters. And then there's this auto form thing, which allows us to provide some, um, some capabilities or, or provide information to Autoform specifically about how uh, it should be laying things out. And so I can provide placeholder data, number of rows for text fields, what group it's going to be in. So there's a legend there. If you know about forms, there's this legend object in a field set and, and this group thing allows you to implement that. For um, composite objects like arrays, you can specify, you know, what are the set of possible values that can be in there. And in the auto form thing in particular, you can specify exactly what kind of, of layout control you need. This is, you know, this is the key thing. I tell you, it took me like quite a while digging around in the documentation to, to kind of figure this out. So hopefully you look at this example code and, uh, and you won't spend as much time as I did. Um, not to say that the documentation isn't good, it's good. There's just a, it, Autoform is kind of a complex package and there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, so, um, you know, I don't want to cast aspersions on, on the authors who obviously spent quite a bit of time providing this very helpful utility to us. So just hopefully for people just trying to get started like me, um, you can get started a lot quicker if you, if you use this code as, as a basis. So um, there's the schema definitions, and you can see that it's both providing basically type level information, like what's the type and allowed values, as well as layout information, which is, a, you know, sometimes combining those two things in one place is, is, is uh, you know, almost a code smell, but in this, in this time, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's a, a fairly reasonable way to go. All right, so then, so, so we've defined the structure, we've provided some hints to Autoform about the layout, and then the final part is our templates. We have two, I put them both in the same file, just because why not? And we're gonna use the very simplest uh, Autoform layout, you know, thing called the quick form, which is, which is awesome, really, because you just have this thing in it and you say, you know what the collection is and I, I want a bootstrap 3 horizontal layout and and here's my column specification um, and then here's my method and you know reset on true so that it blanks it out after the things some, some you know done and and voila you know it's gonna it's gonna do the insert it's gonna do validation it's gonna display that you know the in fact if I show you I should show you so let's say that I uh, I think name is required so if I delete this and I say update Okay, it won't go through because um, you know that was a required field, and I didn't have to write any of that validation code. It just happened almost for free. Okay, so that's super sweet. The and what I did when I when I wrote this is I showed the common stuff for the two, the the update and the add uh, are are these first four, and then the stuff that changes is the bottom piece. So you can kind of easily see what changes when you add when you're doing an insert versus doing an update. Obviously the method specification is different, the method is actually different, and then reset on success doesn't really make sense in the case of an update, but you do have to supply what the document is that's going to be displayed in the update, and that's this, and that's, you know, if you go back to your router, um, you have that data context, right? That's pretty, pretty, uh, okay, so here's where this gets set. Okay, just in case you didn't immediately know that. All right. Um, okay, so where are we in our little thing? Um, let me go back to the... Okay, so, so that's the routing. That's the student data collection. That's the templates. 
And, uh, you know, the only last thing I'll briefly mention, hopefully this will be fixed soon, which is that I'd like to be able to specify help text um, like I did in play example form, but that seems not easy to do, um, even though I, I really think it could be very easy to do. So hopefully the, the developers of Alder Form will make that helpful change to us in the near future. All right, thanks a lot. Hope that was helpful.